Howdy YouTubers, Sturgeon Stairway here, uh, doing a little video on compass collecting as well as a public service considering the dangers of radiation exposure. So I just got a new uh, compass in the mail, fresh from eBay. It's a early 1940s British Mark IX compass. It was manufactured by the Kodak Company, one of their Canadian branches for the British military. And what a lot of people don't know is prior to the 1970s, a lot of these old military compasses contained a large amount of radium, radioactive material, primarily on the dials, uh, which would cause the dials to be illuminated. The radium made a chemical reaction and uh, glowed brightly at night. So if a trooper was out there in the woods or lost from his battalion and needed to find his way in the dark, he could pop that compass open and that radium would be glowing bright, rain or shine. And so uh, to this day, the, the glowing function of the radium is kind of worn out, but the radioactivity still persists and some of these levels can be pretty high. In fact, dangerous to be around for extended periods of time. So if you're a collector out there of vintage compasses or as well as vintage uh, watch dials was another very common use of the radium luminous paint uh, like I said prior to the 1970s when it was banned pretty much worldwide you gotta be really careful because a lot of people were exposed to this stuff back then and came down with some pretty weird cancers and funky stuff like that which you don't want so I've got my vintage Victorine civil defense Geiger counter here gonna fire this sucker up it's got three settings the X100, the X10, and the X1. So I'm going to set it for the X10 function so it multiplies all the stuff on the dial by a factor of 10. So the 0 0.1 becomes 1. And this is in millirentgens per hour, which is a uh, an absorbed dose by a human being. And in most of the literature that I've read, uh, an exposure to an average person, a, a maximum allowable yearly exposure for a civilian, like in a medical setting receiving x-rays or whatnot, is 500 millirankins, uh per year, or, or RADs, uh, Rankin absorbed, absorbed Dose, or uh, Rontgens, some people call it Rontgens. Anyway, so we've got an operational check source on the side of the tube here. We're going to put the probe up against it and make sure it's working. Should read out about between two and three millirentgens. And yeah, we're right at about 2.5 right there, climbing up towards the three. So we know that the Geiger counter is still operational and decently calibrated anyway for being at least. 40, 50 years old. Okay, <clears throat> so then I'm going to try and cant this needle here so you can see it a little bit better. And then let's start moving in a little closer to this package here with the compass in it. Ooh, there you go. We're getting hot. I'm getting a steady two millirankins per hour off of that sucker. Okay. And another dangerous thing about these old compasses is that the radium paint tends to degrade itself over time. So it can flake off and, and form little particulates and little dust powders that can be ingested through the mouth and gotten into the lungs and that's a whole heck of a lot worse than getting it on your hands to where you can wash it off. But in any case, I'm going to be on the safe side of caution and put some latex gloves on here, opening this sucker up.
Always love doing that. All right. So, we'll move this over to the side. I'm going to be very careful here. And I've got a Brunton Eclipse over here. And then my good old Kamanga Model 1915, or 1950 uh, US Army Lens Attic Compass for a size comparison. And if I was being super cautious, I'd be wearing a dust mask or a respirator right now, but I'm just going to be extra careful to try and not agitate things too much. <clears throat> and this is in the original package from the World War II era, about 1942-43 I believe. And it says Compass Prismatic Dry Mark 9. And it says manufactured by the Canadian Kodak Company Limited in Toronto. And from what I've read in Compass collecting websites and stuff, this is one of the hotter compasses out there. They put a lot of radium on this dial, so it's a pretty, pretty radioactive piece. Pretty hot. So we're going to check it. Just check the box along with the Geiger counter. And we'll put it back on the X10 setting. You can see the dial pretty pretty well from there. Wow, we are just spiking up there through the roof. So I'm up to three millirentgens per hour right on the top of the box and we're still climbing. I'm at four. Wow. About four and a half millirentgens per hour right off the top of the box there. That is hot. Wow, and it's off the scale now. I have to back it off, we're at five. So I'm gonna put it on the X100. We'll try it there. My goodness, it's creeping up towards 10 millirentgens per hour. Scary to think what's happening to the cells in my hand right now. Yeah, we've got a solid 10. That is amazing. Wow. Okay, we're going to back off there. I'm going to go ahead and open the sucker up. <clears throat> oh, they packaged it well. Picked it up from a pawn shop in Midwest over in Illinois that's was uh, offering these items for sale on eBay. And a little tape over the top of it. Hmm. I don't want to agitate it too much. Okay. Well, there's the compass itself, and if you see that pinkish coloration to the azimuth arrow, the, the arrow on the card there, as well as this indicator as well, uh, that is radium paint. So it typically uh, has a brownish or pinkish hue uh, from corrosion over the years, and that's a typical of a, of a radium painted compass. And very common to see that as well on the the... United States, the 1938 model uh, lens attic compasses. So, try and open this thing up.
Okay. And a lot of websites say that as long as the radium isn't disturbed and you don't break the uh, bearing indicator or uh, any of the crystal inside there and don't get inside there, you're okay. But what you've really got to pay attention to is there's not only radium inside the crystal there, but there are also radium painted indicators here and here on either side of the fine wire for determining your azimuth as well as on the case opening right here. This is direct radium paint that is just exposed to the element right here. I mean, I could just flake that radium off with my hand and it's, it's, it's out there. It's not covered by any glass or anything. So that this is the spot that scares me the most right up top here. So I'm gonna fire up this Geiger counter again and take a look, see what we got going on. Okay, and we're still on the X100 setting. Let's see, actually, I'm going to turn this box over and I'll set it on the box. My goodness. It is just going through the roof, my friends. It has maxed my meter out. 50, over 50 millirentgens per hour. That is just insane. And I'm not even touching the compass with the probe. Wow. Not so much down by the crystal like I mentioned earlier but as I suspected the scary part is where that radium paint is exposed out into the elements right there where the compass case back opening is my goodness just pegs that meter out wow so this is well over 50 millirankins per hour and doing the mathematical calculations uh, just a few minutes of exposure to this compass and I've basically received my entire uh, uh, dose that would be considered a maximum appropriate uh, dose to a civilian in one year I would be exposed just just by a few minutes of exposure to this compass so just a just a warning out there to you guys that this is dangerous stuff and you don't want to mess around with it so if you're a compass collector or that type of stuff you definitely want to keep these away from children and uh, uh, pets and that type of stuff and if you do handle them you want to handle them uh, with with great care and, and uh, uh, just keep them in a very safe place and uh, so there you go take my 1950 uh, model 1950 lens attic Kamenga and put it up alongside there for comparison I don't want to get it too close get the magnets going haywire but yeah about the same size anyway so, nice little tutorial there for you. I think I'm going to step away from this bad boy. Maybe I'll give my hands a little time to cool down from all that radiation exposure, and then I'll put her away in a safe place where it's out of reach of children. All right, you guys have a good one. Bye now.